tell you, first of all, we, we do have the uh, Mesh Saturday new features leaflet just at the back. In fact, I think it's on the table just out the door, isn't it? Yeah, so just on the left as you go out the door, there's a table with the, these leaflets on it. So please do pick it up uh, before you go today. I'm delighted to uh, introduce you to Scott Cunliffe, who is the Mesh Saturday Scotland and Public Services uh, Manager. Um, he's come today to do a, a talk on data wrangling, which is one of the subjects that you asked about in your questions beforehand. Um, so I think without much further ado, I'll pass over to Scott. Hello, so I'm, uh, my name's Scott Cunliffe. Um, I have to apologise in advance in that I've only been actually in the company for about um, uh, two, uh, two months. And I was also supposed to bring a uh, technical guy with me, so I've been left in the lurch. So you have the pleasure of someone who's been here two months who's non-technical. <laughs> so we'll see how we get on. So I thought uh, I'd use that to my advantage and do a steer towards self-service. Um, so I think one of the things about MicroStrategy, which is um, why I joined the organisation, is I think that BI and data analytics is something that no longer sits within the realm of IT, that it should be open to everybody. Um, now, I'm either very brave or very stupid, um, but I'm gonna actually going to do a few slides, which I'm not going to talk about for very long, and then I'm actually going to dive into a demonstration of data wrangling. Uh, what would be good, though, initially, I mean, how many, if I could see a show of hands, how many people have actually used data wrangling in any way, shape, or form? <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Anyone actually, how many people have actually heard of it? <coughs> right, okay. And how many people on version 10? Okay, great. So, right. So I'm just going to, as I say, just go through a very, um, about four or five slides very briefly. So as I said, one of the things that's um, happening at the moment is people are moving more to self-service. Um, it's not an insult towards IT, um, but people need to be more, less reliant on them. In a, in a world where data is king, uh, people such as myself need to get their hands on to re reporting and anal analysis um, themselves rather than going to IT. Of course, uh, things like administrators and stuff will still have to sit within IT. But this is the way the world's moving. And when I went, went to interview for MicroStrategy, um, one of the things I looked at was things like Gartner, who said that they were very much on the forefront of that. And I see them as a, uh, MicroStrategy very much as an all-rounder. Um, you've got people like Tableau that are very good at the visualization part of it. But MicroStrategy, when I was looking at them, version 10, I think is absolutely fantastic for visualization. I think that you look back at version nine, looked a bit archaic. Um, there's a, almost a derogatory view that, um, I'm back at Business Subjects 10 years ago, they used to call it the lipstick on the pig, um, and the data behind it was what was important. I've never, I've never bought into that. You know, people love iPads and iPhones because they're beautiful. Um, so to get people to uh, use dashboards, be exciting to them, they should have great visualizations. Now, version 10 is much better at doing that, and we've now got integration with things like D3, um, which I don't know if you're aware of, but the, it's an open standard, open source um, visualization um, tool. So now you've got the connection of many sources of data. You can then prepare that data with data wrangling, which is kind of a light data cleansing tool which anybody can use, including myself. Um, then you can do data discovery and visualization, and you can use it, of course, across Macs and, and PCs. And this shows a sort of data discovery workflow. Um, the data connects to pretty much anything you could possibly want to connect to. Um, we can then prepare that data with um, data profiling, removing blanks, all this sort of thing that I'm going to show you in a second. And then we can analyze that data and then publish it and we um, broadcast it and we've got one of the most scalable um, solutions on the market, according to Gartner. So here's all the data sources that we're currently connecting to. Um, we've got one of the best connections with Hadoop at the moment. We can connect to things like Salesforce, Excel, social media. And actually, what I'm going to actually show you, actually, well, worth mentioning also, those of you that are business objects clients, uh, um, we can actually connect to business objects reports as well. So if you're moving away from um, business objects, which I personally think you should do, um, and I've worked there, <laughs> I've worked there, so um, I, I can say that, um, that, um, yeah, we can then connect to business objects and make the uh, migration um, that much easier when there's that sort of overlap. Um, one of the things I should like to mention about MicroStrategy also is it's all built from the ground up. So people like Mark, um, SAP and Oracle, you know, it's kind of a Frankenstein monster of lots of different applications. And MicroStrategy is totally built from the ground up without any acquisition. Um, so just a little bit about data wrangling. Um, you can read this for yourselves, but you, you can take the data and before you load it into MicroStrategy, you can fix things like spelling errors. You can you can cleanse your data, you can do cross-tamping, you can do some simple transformations and things like that. I would 
add that it's not going to replace an ETL tool. Um, it's not going to replace Informatica. It's something to allow you to uh, edit your data, cleanse your data on the fly. So this is where it gets risky. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move to MicroStrategy Desktop. Um, anybody use MicroStrategy Desktop at all? Yeah, so you can download that from the website for free. If you're looking at moving to version 10, I strongly advise you do that because it's a great way of demonstrating um, how, this, uh, how, how good version 10 is. So what I'm going to do is, this is a real world example. As I said, I'm new, I've been here two months. When I was looking at my territory, as well as public sector in Scotland as a region, um, I'm getting supplemented with some other um, industries as well. So my uh, boss, who's a country manager in the UK for Mark Strachey, said, why don't you use desktop to look at the FTSE 100 and then categorize it by sector, then you can see where you want to target your, um, your business for the year. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to point MicroStrategy at a Wikipedia page for FTSE 100, then cleanse that data and do some analysis on it. So if I switch to uh, Internet Explorer, there we've got the FTSE 100 index. So if I scroll down, uh, hang a second, you should say you can see that. So that's all the data I'm going to pull in. So we're pulling in some unstructured data. Oh, okay. Do I drag it to the left, or? Uh, okay. So if I, right, okay, there we go. Right. So I'm just going to uh, copy and paste the FTSE 100 index. I'm going to get back into Mark's strategy. Um, okay, maybe I was stupid. Uh, it's not actually the demo I can't do, I can't navigate this. Um, so, how do I, can someone help me here? Because <laughs> I can't type in that. Because I can, I can see it on there, but I can't see it on here, which makes it quite difficult. Right click on the desktop and choose graphic options, I think you should be able to say duplicate screen rather than extend that uh, Right. Yeah, someone can't be able to write. Because this is uh, it's using two monitors, so we need to... If we could just go, if we just have the mark strategy on there and on here, the desktop, yeah, then I can yeah, do, that's fine. then I can just do it from there. I don't usually look at the, um, the internet anymore. Here. Right, so... To the screen resolution, I think it's in there. And rather than extend them, we're just going to duplicate them. And that should be in, and I'll be able to get there. So maybe just. If I move now to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here we are with MicroStrategy Desktop. So I'm now going to point this data. So I'm going to point MicroStrategy at some public data. So here you've got all the data sources um, that were shown actually I think in your presentation earlier. Uh, we could pick on anything here, but we're going to pick on public data. I'm now going to paste the URL for the FTSE 100 into here. And after a few seconds, it should load that data in. Eventually, there we go. So what do I do here is I select this, and I want to prepare that data. So it's just fetching the cube information now. So now we can see down the bottom, we can see the company, the ticker, sector, market cap, and employees. Now, what we want to do is then wrangle that data. Don't ask me what wrangle means, I have no idea. Um, so what we've got here is we've got the data and we do some simple cleansing here. So if I want to, for, for, for example, we've got the ticker there, I can, choose, I can move that into lowercase if I wanted to. I can remove gaps. What I'm going to do here is because the way MicroStrategy is set up um, in terms of their sectors, certain things are counted as finance. So I'm just going to go into private equity. I'm going to change that to the finance sector because they're all grouped together. By that double tick, that then moves all the private equity ones all the way down into finance. I'm then going to do the same with fund management. 
and then moving all the way down. And mining is going to be utilities. So I'm now editing and cleansing the data on the fly. So the FTSE 100 um, markets are, um, have the synergies, uh, appropriate synergies with market strategies. Uh, what I can then do is I can say I want to look at only certain size organizations. So I'm going to look at organizations with a market cap of over 10 billion. I would work with customers smaller than that, but just for the purposes of this example. So now I've done some simple cleansing of that information. I'm, I'm now happy with that. I can then load that into the uh, into Mark Shashi. So what I want to do here is I've got sector, I've got company, and I've got down here I'm going to put employees in. I'm going to put market cap in. But then I want to do some filters by sector, because I'm not working with every sector. I don't want to work with banking, beverages, chemicals, consumer, food, fashion, finance. I don't want to work with any of these. There's only a number of sectors. So within, I don't know, if we ignore the issues at the start, within maybe a couple of minutes, I'm getting to the point where I can now see the kind of the sectors that I'm going to be working with. And then very easily from there, I then could start to do some simple analytics. And if I then make this more useful, so this is a bubble graph, I'm going to do a vertical of employees, I'm going to do a horizontal market cap that in there already we're going to do a color by sector and they're going to break by company and then size by employees so we've now got the organizations that I'm targeting here and then we can do uh, data labels and we can now look at which companies are there so say that I don't want to work with Intercontinental and Tesco's because they're big business objects clients we've got no chance I can then look into these one here Tesco's is a bad choice. We've got Tesco's in the audience somewhere. <laughs> Ignore that. We do want to work with Tesco's. Um, yeah, so, we, so I'm dragging that data there, and this is where I'm going to focus my attention. So I'm now going to look at Unilever, Royal Mail, uh, BP, GSK. These are where I'm going to start putting my business plans together for the next year, based on the FTSE 100 now and some very quick data wrangling and some analysis. So there you go. So if I can do it, anybody can. And that's my uh, presentation on data wrangling. Thank <laughs> you.